Coming up, how to make a rainbow in a jar. Hatch some weird new creatures in your fish tank. Turn a drink bottle into a wave machine. The secret to pulling off the ultimate coin trick. And build a brilliant bridge in your own backyard. Oh yes, I've always fancied myself as a bridge builder. <laughs> well, fasten your seatbelt, Dana, because you're in for the ride of your life. We're going over a great big suspension bridge. I love these long bridges. It's a long way up to the top. Look how many cars and trucks this bridge can support all at once. It must be so strong. It's even strong enough to carry our car with Dad in it after he's had a big lunch. <laughs> when I get home, I'm going to build my own bridge and see if I can make one just as strong. So, I have two strong wooden chairs. No, they're not for sitting on, you lazy builders. They're the two sides of the bridge. I'll turn them to face each other like this. Now I need this cardboard to make a roadway. And these books to act as cars on the bridge. I'll lay the roadway between the two chairs. That looks like a bridge to me. Now let's see how heavy a load it can hold. Seems OK with one book on it. How does it cope with two? Oh, no! It's not strong enough. It's not funny, you guys. This bridge building is serious stuff. There are many types of bridge. This bridge is a simple beam bridge. Its strength depends entirely on the strength of its beam. The thin cardboard Zach used isn't strong enough to support much weight. You know, I think I need to come up with a stronger design. I love being at the beach. I can watch the waves for hours. They're so beautiful the way they rise up and curl over on themselves. I'll just catch some of this wave right here. There, my own ocean in a bottle. Now to make some waves. If I add some blue food colouring, my waves will be easier to see. Now we're little rocking from side to side. There, you can see I'm getting a wave going. But it's not looking much like waves on the ocean. It's not as steep. I think I know how to make a steeper wave. Here's my secret ingredient. It's oil. I'm going to pour a layer of it on top of the water. Now let's try again. That's more like it. Now I'm getting a wave that's shaped just like the one on the ocean. As a wave reaches the shore and the sea becomes shallower, the energy in the wave pushes it higher until it topples over onto itself. Grace's wave in a bottle works in a different way. Because oil is not as runny as water, the energy wave in her bottle meets with more resistance as it passes along the oily surface. This causes the waves to be steeper than they are in plain old water. Well, it might not be as beautiful as the real thing, but at least I can take my wave in a bottle with me anywhere. Go, Grace! That's what I call putting on your thinking cap. And I think our budding bridge builders are about to do the same thing. Well, my first attempt at bridge building ended in a collapse. So I've had to rethink my design. That sprinting bridge we saw today had strong cables holding up the roadway. I think I need to turn my bridge into a suspension bridge. I need this rope, some sticky tape and a ball of string. OK, you two can help me build a suspension bridge. First, let's get this rope tied between the two chairs. Tie it loosely around the top of each side of the chair. Now we need about eight pieces of string, all the same length. These will connect the roadway to the top ropes. Thanks, guys. Now stick four pieces of string to each side of the roadway like this. Nice work. 
These are our weight supporting cables that will make the roadway strong. Then we tie the other end of each piece of string to the top ropes. This is just like the design of a real suspension bridge. I can't wait to put it to the test. <laughs> David and I are best buddies. Our favourite thing is to set challenges for each other. Hey! This lid gives me an idea. Where are those coins? Good. Now for my hands-free challenge. I'll see if David can blow a coin from the step into the lid. Come on, blow harder. Give it more air. Give up? Watch and be astounded. Yay! It's a goal! <laughs> Paul's trick is to blow about two finger widths above the coin. This creates a low pressure area just on top of the coin. As surrounding air rushes in to fill the low pressure, the coin gets lifted into the current and blown towards the lid. Looks like I won this challenge, but we are still best buddies. Nice trick, guys. I bet those two will think of another challenge before dinner time. And meanwhile, down at the old fish tank, it's getting mighty close to dinner time already. It's feeding time for Jaws the goldfish. But I think it's time Jordan discovered the goldfish aren't the only creatures that like to eat this stuff. Do you think Jaws will mind if I take some of his food? You're welcome to try it, Beck. But I don't think you're going to like it. No, it's not for me, silly. It's for my baby Brian Shrimp. Come on, I'll show you. We need a jar of warm water, some sea salt, a pinch of Jaws food, and some of these Brian Shrimp eggs. You can buy them at pet shops. OK, the first thing we need to do is tip a few tablespoons of sea salt into the water. Stir it in until it's all dissolved. The salt makes the water seem just right for these tiny brine shrimp eggs. Now let's put something in there for them to eat when they hatch. Some of Jaws' delicious fish food is what we need. We need to give them about two days to hatch. So let's put them somewhere safe while we wait. Let's have a look. I think our brine shrimps should have hatched. They are in there, but they're still very small. Try looking at them through this magnifying glass. Aren't they amazing little creatures? Look at the way they swim. Some sea animals like brine shrimp lay eggs that survive for as many as four years out of the water. Then, when conditions are right, they begin to hatch. Jordan is looking at tiny larvae that hatched from brine shrimp eggs. The larvae will eventually grow into adults about as long as your thumbnail. I think Jordan's found a whole jar full of new friends. I hope his friends don't eat all my food. <laughs> Daniel gets really bored when I'm on one of my pattern making crazes. I just love mixing and matching liquids and colours. He thinks it's pathetic, but I don't. Look, it's so cool the way water and oil just don't mix, no matter how hard you try. And then other things, like water and food colouring, are the perfect partners. Now that's pretty. I'll give it a shake. Yep. Perfectly mixed. Still not enough to interest Daniel, I see. I wonder if he'll be more impressed if I take oil and water which don't mix and add food colouring. Who knows what it'll do in the oil? Only one thing to do. OK, in goes some red. It's a nice strong colour to take on the muscle of this oil. Looks like the red food colouring is no match for the might of the oil. Oh no, wait a minute. There's some movement. Yes! The red is farting through the oil. Now I'm going to get really creative. In goes some yellow and green. They're mixing. Wow, it's like a runaway rainbow. How about some blue? Oh, look at that. The 
That's even got Daniel's attention. That's sensational. Ashley's runaway rainbow works because food colouring is denser than oil. While it won't mix with the oil, it will eventually sink to the bottom of the oil layer. Once it makes its escape into the water, it does so with a burst of brilliant colour. This is the best fun. I could do this all day. Maybe even Daniel will get on the rainbow-making bandwagon. You know what? I could really get into that rainbow building thing in a big way, Dana. And I could get into bridge building. Can't wait to see how that suspension bridge is going to hold up. After a bit of a bridge disaster at our first try, we've built a super strong suspension bridge. It has eight cables supporting the roadway. First, I need Marcus and Kimberly to anchor the supporting top rope to the ground. Thanks, guys. It's time to see how many books it can take. One book. Two books. It can take two books. It's already stronger than our first bridge. Three books. So far, so good. Four, five, six. Yes, it's holding six books. A round of applause, please, for our suspension bridge. Whoa! I forgot you guys need to keep your hands on the ropes. Oh, well, I think we did a good job. That was one tough suspension bridge. This type of bridge is the strongest of all the bridges. It's called a suspension bridge because the road is suspended from overhead cables. Zach's bridge works in the same way. By pulling on the ropes and applying tension, the weight of the books is spread out between the strings and so the thin piece of cardboard can now hold lots of books. OK, this time, let's see if we can build a bridge strong enough to carry Dad and his extra serve of lunch. Brilliant! I knew our backyard bridge builders would make it in the end. Yep, and we've made it to the end of another show too. See, see you next time! time.